before, but you absolutely corrupt the process when you can have super PAC. Most super PAC have the targeted poverty. Actually, they, 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 you can use unlimited amounts of money to destroy people. That's building in, that corruption builds in the seats of our destruction. So that will, that will not be in a democratic election until that, in fact, we get a ruling on one person, one vote, not one corporation as one vote. And I support that, that struggle. We really, we really, we didn't mark itself the Montgomery the corporation have the same right as the Panama <laughs> Hand. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say thank you, uh, Reverend Jackson, for being here today, for being a part of our community, not just for evening, but uh, the Lehigh Valley as a whole. It's uh, really significant to a lot of us. Uh, my name is Michael, I'm a junior here on campus, and um, I actually have the great fortune of being in a class where we're studying kind of uh, the religious foundations of the civil rights movement. And we're reading the work of Howard Thurman, and he talks about how Christianity is uh, a religion that has been used to kind of subjugate and disenfranchise people, uh, particularly the African American community, as they were struggling uh, to end slavery and, and get out of slavery. So, my question for you is uh, what advice would you have today for another group of people who are dealing with Christianity being a tool that's used to kind of subjugate them, and that would be the LGBT community? What advice do you have to them to harnessing kind of uh, the power that religion has to gain equality? The reason why I want you to uh, read Dr. Kim's book on uh, the grace of Sophia, she deals as an, an Asian American woman who faces marginalization by sex, by language, and by culture. Jesus is in the margins, which is Dr. Thurman's premise. How do we worship? How, do we, how does Jesus speak to the People whose backs are against the wall. What are your options? One option is to is to imitate Rome, to imitate the broader society, to become a trusted extension of the uh, of the established order, which Herod became. Another is to internalize your pain, become angry, and do nothing but just become angry and hate filled. Another option is to engage in riots and violence and be wiped out by a superior force. Another is to have the power to control yourself and transform your environment. That's kind of what Dr. Thurman is saying to us, that you must have the capacity uh, not to join the established order to the extent to which it is greedy uh, and, and it is arrogant, not to become angry and therefore become paralyzed, but become a transformative force for good. And I'm glad that you have, that you have studied Dr. Thurman because we don't have a, a, a theologian is more profound in his depth uh, in theology than Thurman. He has been, in many ways, the textbook for the modern day civil rights movement. Dr. King had, had Dr. Thurman's book in his, in his attitude every day. He never, he never turned it loose. He meant that much to him. And I, I keep as close as I can to Jesus disinherited. And then that lineage of Dr. Kim's book on Sophia and the Grace and one on Child's and another issue about the Holy Spirit, Dr. Orbert Hendricks' book on the politics of Jesus. Likewise, gets that the conditions under which our religion emerges. It is a bottom up religion, not a top down. It's mangy up, not made. Uh, a poor person's religion has been corrupted by the rich. This, this, was not, this is not Rome's religion. It was not even Herod's religion. This was a poor people's religion being corrupted by the rich. That's what they've reshaped in their own image and in their own values. And, and if you rest with Dr. Thurman, you'll come up with a very different view of how you relate to people and see the value of people who are otherwise deprived, but who have within them special genius because everybody really does matter. Thank you very much.